25th of March, which means placement starts for the next eight weeks. I'm going to be up at 4.45 in the morning, heading to my ward for my placements for my 12 and a half hour shifts. <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> it's just started, I'm so tired. I'm ready, my hair is done properly for placement, up off the collar, my uniform's ready. Um, and I'm about to go and get my first bus. It takes two buses to get to this hospital. Um, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes in total on the bus. And yeah, hopefully it's gonna be a good day. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know the ward, I don't know the hospital, I don't know staff. It's always nerve wracking on the first day. But hopefully it's gonna be a really good day, a really good team, and yeah, I'll see you all at 8 p.m. when I finish. I've arrived. Um, so far the place looks really nice. Um, it's a really small area. It looks really friendly. All the staff seem nice so far. Um, but I'm here early, half an hour early, so I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and settle in and hopefully meet my mentor and hopefully have a great day. So I'll see you all later. So I don't know if I told you all, but this is a dementia rehabilitation ward. It's very much community feeling and community based. So. There is, I think, 18 beds, or was it 16 beds? I think there's 18 beds. So all of the patients, they do have dementia and they are there either because they're a step down from the ward before they go into the back into the home, sort of to, just to get them back up and motivated and mobilised again before they go home. Also, we get people for respite, so people will book their sort of family members in for respite, like for a week or two weeks, let's say. So for example, if the family are their primary carers and they, they're going on holiday, they can't take the patient with them, then the patient will come to us and stay with us for a week or two while they go off on holiday. And to be honest, I think that's really, really important because if you're caring for someone 24 seven, you need, I think you need that break. You need that for you as the carer and the patient needs that to sort of get out of that situation and go to somewhere else where they can see new faces, new conversations and it's like a mini holiday for them as well. I think that's really important to just for everybody to have that time out and then come back refreshed, recharged and back to it. So yeah, so that's basically the sort of patients we have and we have a few nurses, healthcare assistants, there's housekeeping, there's the reception, there's ward clerks, there's matrons, there's bed managers, there's advanced nurse practitioners who can prescribe and there's no doctor but there is an on-call doctor there so if there's anything that's going down the doctor gets called and the layout of the ward is it's very much community feel, so you have got a proper kitchen area, you've got a dining room where all the residents go down and they go to the dining room to eat together. Um, they've got a TV room so they can all go to the TV room and watch TV together if they want to. And then you've got three bays with four beds in each bay and then you've got a set amount of side rooms, private rooms for patients. And you've got the male and female bays separate as well. So it's really really like i'm one of these people that i like a good layout when i go into a workplace or a ward or a conference or event or something like that like i'm all about layouts and this one is really nice i really really like it it's got big open windows the light comes in the bays are lovely the side rooms are lovely there's loads of space considering it's classed as a ward there's loads of space to move around which is a massive, massive big thing for wards because you've got hoists and wheelchairs and forever knocking water bottles off, water jugs off the um, tables. So this is really nice. I feel really comfortable in this place and it's really easy to find your way around. So I really like that about the place. And it's got a garden. It's got a garden that the residents can go and sit in and enjoy the sunshine and the fresh air. <sighs> what ward has that? <laughs> I mean, they do have sort of, I suppose outside areas but this has got a really nice garden so I am planning to take residents out there and encourage them to get some fresh air and sunshine because it can make a world of difference so yeah so that's basically the the ward and the layout yesterday was a really good day it was a lot quieter and a lot slower than a regular ward which threw me <laughs> because I'm used to being really busy and getting on and doing things so I was sort of walking around like what can I do now what can I do now what's to do tell me what to do I need to do something so it was a little bit slow but it was really really nice because you could take that time out 
to sort of find your feet and get to know the patients, talk to the patients, talk to the staff, get to know the staff, get to know the routine of the ward properly rather than just being thrown in and everything going to mush. So that from that aspect, it was really, really good. All of the staff were absolutely amazing. They're so, so lovely. And the patients are so lovely. Um, if I haven't already told you yet, it's dementia rehabilitation. So it's just, I mean, I love the elderly and I love dementia. So it is right up my street and I knew I would like it, but the night before, the week leading up to placement I was a bit nervous about it because it's a new placement it's the fear of the unknown that we all have when we go to placement we, we, we all get scared basically and until you've done that first shift you're gonna be scared to death <laughs> about placement but it was good it was a really good day I learned actually I learned something no I didn't learn something new I did something new so yesterday if you remember for those of you that have watched previous vlogs one of our last modules of second year was all about writing a care plan. I was really excited because I haven't done a care plan previously like this before, if that makes sense. So when I worked in the elderly people's homes years ago, we always did care plans for everything. So their personal hygiene, their uh, mobility, all things, it would be separate care plans for everything. And you would sign each day to say you followed that care plan. So. I've since then I haven't done anything you don't get anything like that on the wards usually it's normally sort of tick boxes and sign sheets um, assessment charts things like that but these were proper care plans so you'd have your problem that you've identified so if a patient can't wash themselves properly if they need encouragement motivation and then you'll have the goal okay what is your goal for that problem when do you want it to be achieved by and the intervention on how you're going to do that so yesterday I sat down and looked at it and I was like I'm going to do a care plan for the first time in forever. The first time ever as a student nurse doing a care plan. We've done it in the module, so I should have some knowledge behind it and I can put it into practice. Yes, putting the theory to practice. This is what I love about placement. So I sat down and I got a few out. So I got personal care, I got oral care and a blank one. So I did three for this one patient. So I did with personal care because she needs encouragement and she needs a lot of help with her personal care and one of the things that the son had actually said to me was while she's here could you clean her nails and cut her nails because she won't let anybody do it so i was like okay don't know how this is going to work but we'll give it a go because we have to try so if you don't try you don't know so i sat there and i put okay problem identifying the patient's nails are quite dirty they're quite long and because she clenches her fists it's sort of a hazard so we don't want that to happen so we want to get those nails short that was my problem and then the goal is to try and encourage patient to clean and cut nails but she can't do it herself so you kind of have to i'm gonna to have to distract her i'm gonna to have to motivate her i'm gonna to have to use different techniques and it's probably going to take me a whole day to do this it's not going to be a quick problem to solve it is going to be a massive challenge but i'm going to try it because it needs to be done and it's quite important nail care nail care is often forgotten and it's really nice um it was one of the things i love as well as cleaning dentures one of the things i love is doing people's nails and feet and getting them clean but anyway that was the goal intervention is you know gain consent from the patient try and do the nail care try and cut the nails if not get a lady that comes to cut nails so see if she will do it if she won't accept me to do it or if she won't accept another member of staff try different members of staff because sometimes it's just a different face that helps and a different approach and a different way of saying things to the patient you have to try everything possible to finally get your result and your goal but we'll see she's with us for a week so we'll see by next week i'm praying i've done those nails because that is my target and that's what i'm going to do and I've promised the son that I will try, so I'm gonna do that. Um, so yeah, so that, that was really, really good to do those care plans. Oh, and the blank one, I put activities. This was something I personally put into place when I was asking about the patient's history and what she liked to do before, activities-wise, like what were her hobbies, what does she do? And he, he made a comment that um, she used to love bingo, but she doesn't do it anymore. And she doesn't do anything, you know, the only thing she likes to do is listen to the radio she'll listen to radio too but she won't like she used to watch coronation street and things like that but she just doesn't watch telly anymore because her attention span just isn't there 
so I thought okay well do you know what let's try let's try and do something because I want her to have a sense of belonging like what sort of quality of life is that if you're just sitting there listening to the radio and I just I felt a little bit sad by that obviously it can't be helped it's the nature of dementia unfortunately you do become unaware of things and sort of I, I don't want to offend anyone by saying this but you sort of become in your little bubble and that's your bubble and you're happy just being in that bubble I think just from what I know I hope I've explained that right but I want to so I wanted to put something in place to get this patient to partake in activities for someone to encourage this patient to get out of her room even to sit in the garden and he said that she used to do gardening I was wondering whether maybe we could take her into the garden and she can see the flowers and it's very sensory because I think people with dementia do like that sensory thing they like sort of lights they like textures they like to rub things they like to feel things they like to pick at things they like to listen to things different sounds so i'm thinking that or when there's some activities going on some music activities maybe even bingo i'm gonna have a look at the week and see if there's an activities chart to try and get her and encourage her and motivate her to go down and take part in those i mean she might need help but she's gonna love it i think she's gonna really love it in my head it's gonna be amazing and i'm praying that it is gonna be so that was the other care plan I did to encourage the patient to partake in activities to give her that sense of belonging and quality of life, giving her that back and hopefully it's going to be good and hopefully I'm going to win at that, fingers crossed, I can do this. So yeah, so other things that went on, I did the care plans, I did um, admissions, I, did, I haven't done a discharge there yet but I did a new admission so you have to go through all of the risk assessments with the patient, going over how they mobilise, how they transfer from chair to bed, they're, they're at risk of falls, risk of pressure sores, nutrition, their fluid intake, manual handling, all of that. <laughs> there's quite a lot so we did all of that um, well I did all of that I, I got it all ready and, and then I went back to my mentor and I said okay just check that I've done this right because because it's a new setting I haven't been at this particular hospital before it's all new paperwork it's not paperwork I'm familiar with but I got on and I did it and then I got my mentor just to check over to make sure I was doing it properly and luckily I did it all right and he did say I've done it all right there was just one or two things that I sort of did extra that I didn't have to do so he removed that and that was it I was like yes I've done it so all in all it was a really good day I, I think I'm going to really enjoy it apart from it being like a little bit slower paced th that's the only issue but I don't think that's an issue because I've got more time to do paperwork and catch up with things and spend time with patients which is amazing which is what I always want I'm going to spend the next couple of days revising for this next exam I have two weeks until this exam not counting down or anything I'm panicking <sighs> hopefully it'll be okay but I'll let you know how it goes. I'll probably be crying at the end of it. Um, but yeah, so I'm back in Friday, Saturday, um, and then I'm off Sunday, which will be today. And hopefully I'm gonna be having a nice day. I'm gonna be relaxing. I'm gonna do a little bit of revision and chilling out. So that's it from me. I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to vlog Friday, Saturday, just because I'm not gonna finish till really, really late. And then I'm not gonna finish till late Saturday. I'm not gonna have a chance to edit this video so i might just post this one and then i'll catch up with you all next week and just because the time it takes for my videos to upload because my wi-fi is absolutely shocking it takes all night to upload so i'm not gonna have time i don't think to vlog friday saturday's placements but the weekend after i'm off so i will have time to get a vlog together and post that one for next week so i'll just come i might combine it all together but we'll see so i hope you all have an amazing week i shall see you all next week and hopefully it's going to be an amazing week fingers crossed <laughs>